All right, let's get, um, I, while we're all here, for, I know we have some guests, but for those that are EXP, um, I want y'all, she doesn't know I'm gonna call her out, but um, Julie Floyd is one of our brokers for the Woo! state in the back. All right. Um, I bet you guys have probably interacted with her in the world or she jumps in and it's all solution focused, but um, I was really excited that she's here and you're hiding back there, but. Sorry, I had a work meeting that I couldn't. Yeah. She's amazing. I mean, y'all know we have like six brokers around the state, but she's actually here. So she's really awesome to um, have in our family. So thank you thank for being you, here. Thank you, Julie. Um, was, this, was this helpful? Was this good? Yes. Yeah? Um, we're going to open it up for some q and I want to say, you know, Ralph, Nolly talks about 100 deals a year. That's insane, right? Um, but it's not unattainable. Last year, I'm going to give you some numbers. I've never done 100. Okay, you're well, amazing. Um, yeah. But last year, in COVID, I did 77 transactions. 50% of those were listings. I'm usually listing heavy, but all of us, I, see, I think we're pretty buyer heavy right now. 50% of those were listings. So if you think about the numbers, I worked way too hard on that other 50% <laughs> on those buyers than the yeah. listings, right? Once you kind of get your strategy, once you kind of get your process, it's a lot easier. And then you get your confidence and you walk in. So I want you guys to get to know each other more and more because if there's ever a listing opportunity, go shadow somebody. Yeah. Right. I've got agents that shadow me. Uh, I mean, Lisa had me come check out a listing that she was looking at that was a crazy one. And so it's really kind of good to to bounce things off of people, right? I mean, we've been doing this a long time, but I still pull people in to go look at a property or run numbers, especially in this market, right? So um, listings are the key. I know that's not 100% that we're always gonna get 100% listings, but if you focus on those, and if you call your sphere, right? He's talking about all these different ways. I'm 100% sphere-based. That's not to say that's the only way to do business, but it gives me a challenge as well, right? In my neighborhood, I don't do the geographic farming. My 15-year-old came home one day, he goes, Mom, there's other signs in the yard. Doesn't that make you mad? <laughs> I said, no, because it's my fault, yeah. right? I'm being a secret agent. So that's eye-opening for me as well, right? Even if we've been in the business a long time, we get casual, we get comfortable. So don't be comfortable, right? Let's just, the better we are together, the better we're gonna just knock it out of the park in this market. Um, but just reach out to all of us. Let us all help each other out. Whether you're new, whether you're not new, I'm gonna reach out to some of y'all from time to time, but let's shadow each other, let's, let's um, collaborate. That's what we're all about, that's what makes us better. All right, so um, listings are challenging, but if you, here, I'll give you an example of something I did with my sphere. I called him, I was like, I don't know if you realize, I just sold a house in your neighborhood. Did you know your house was worth this much? It's a conversation. Yeah. I'm not gonna ever cold call or just call my sphere and say, hi, do you know anybody looking to buy, sell, or invest? That's just not me. It might be you. That's not a bad thing if that's you. But you're giving them education. Serve them, right? Let them know that you're a resource because it's going to make it easier for them to come to you and say, oh, wait a minute. My agent just called me and told me this is what the market is doing. And then you're going to get calls. I got three referrals just from that, having conversations with other people that they then had conversations with their people, mm -hmm. right? So just always think about how you can serve because we assume everybody knows what's going on in the market because we live in the market. We're a part of the market all the time. Don't assume that because they have no idea. No. Right? So what questions, what things can we help and answer that y'all are experiencing or challenged with or just anything? Yes, ma'am. I can do that real quick. So um, <clears throat> I sat down with Srini, good friend of mine. Uh, well, I've worked with him for years and years, buying and selling and buying and selling. And he has a situation now where he desires to sell his house in North Austin. And his son is going to college. He's going to Purdue. And um, he just, he really wants to sell. And I, and I thought I was just going to go sit down with Srini. He was going to help. He was going to feed me a great meal because his wife loves to cook. And I was just going to talk him out of it. Like, dude, 
But what I did was I brought him data, information. And I said, Trini, if you sell right now, you'll probably get about 120 to 130, maybe even 140,000 above what the mar what appraisal would typically be. Now, what do you want to buy? So we went through everything. I want to buy this. I want to downsize. My son's moving out. I don't need this, whatever. So I said, so I looked at all the data and it pointed to the fact that he was probably going to have to pay an additional 50 or 60,000 over to buy what he wanted in a downside situation. So I said, Trina, you have to, you have to realize that you'll get 100, 130 more, but you'll pay an extra 70, but you're still ahead. Does that make sense? And he looked at it, the data, he said, yeah, that makes sense, I wanna try it. So we got him under contract with a new build. He went 55,000 over before he finally got something because he lost a bunch of them. But he went 55,000 over. I'm still gonna get him at this point, probably another 140. So he's still ahead 90. It's just math, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the conversation that I had with him. And if you're armed with the right data and you know what they desire to do, then you just do, it's just a math problem. If they're going to, net an additional hundred, but also pay an additional hundred, who cares? That's the same market it would have been two years ago, right? Because the gain was subtracted by the, the loss. So that's, that's what you wanna do. Now, if it doesn't make sense at all, then it doesn't make sense. You know, it, it may make more sense for them to, so it really depends on the reason, the motivation, and the math. Does that make sense? Oh, that's yeah. Right. Yeah, it's all about educating what their needs are. Asking a lot of questions. I think sometimes as real estate agents, we sit there and talk a lot. It's not about us. It's about what they need. What, what, is, what are you trying to accomplish? One of my clients understood the numbers. He understood the math. And he said, well, I could be more competitive in a buyer's market if I don't have to have a contingency. So we sold their house at crazy money above and they rented. Mm -hmm. Right. And he said, well, this puts us in a better position where we can rent. Now they're paying, ex you know, high rental fees, but it gives them that opportunity to really be able to figure out what they want and where they want to be right. and have the cash and jump mm -hmm. when they need to jump. And now they're a cash buyer. Right. So it just it depends on who you're who you're talking to and what their goals are. Um, but just really understand how you can serve them. And because you're the, you're an advisor. So just advise different options that they might not have thought about before. And also if they're looking in a higher range, like I've got a, a guy right now that's actually moving to Austin and he's kind of a, a dream client. He's an entrepreneur like me. We run in a lot of the same circles with Russell Brunson, ClickFunnels, and um, he's looking around 1.8. That's a buyer that, that I don't mind working with, right? And so, um, he, so, so it, when, I'm, when I'm looking at everything that's, and he's very specific, he knows exactly what he wants. There's less inventory up there, but there's also less, it doesn't move as crazy. There's less multiple offers. So stuff is staying on for like 20, 25 days. Um, we're in, in a lower price range, like 500, 400, 600, 800. It's nuts. You see what I'm saying? So really, it's, it's the whole story. And by the way, don't negate to gift yourself with the opportunity to sit down with your clients, even if you know it won't work. And even if you're gonna talk them out, because something will happen in that conversation, they'll talk to a neighbor or somebody at church, like, hey, my realtor came over, oh, I'm thinking about doing it, and I really need to do it, you know, I have a rental property or whatever, something is gonna come out of it. So um, even if you know, in other words, don't prejudge it. Also on this whole thing about um, calling your sphere of influence, this is something I learned from Gene Frederick, and I really, it really hasn't, by the way, stuff has to go, come from your brain to your heart before it really connects, did y'all know that? So it hasn't made it to, its, to my heart yet, but it's kind of in between, right? And he has this whole concept of, because I'm a recruiter, I like to, I would have never said I was a recruiter at Keller Williams. I, I brought in like seven people in 10 years. Hardly recruiter of the year, right? Um, here, I brought in 116 in about, in, in 28 months, okay, on my first line. So I'm passionate about this company. I love what this company uh, is all about. What, what he taught me is Nolly, when you call your, your person, have no outcome, have no desired outcome. Just have a conversation, right? So when you're calling your sphere of influence, it's not to sell them or get them to buy or sell or even give you a name. It's just to check in on them to see how they're doing because that's what friends do, right? Um, and so, 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 so I like that. It hasn't registered with me yet because I'm a salesman. 
<laughs> when I call you, it's a sales call. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, hey, the purpose of this call is, right? But I'm, I'm learning to, to get to that point. Yeah, when I call you, it's not a sales call. Yeah, yeah. exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I think it depends on what your business strategy is. For yeah. me, I don't work sign calls. Um, I don't work the buyers as much as I um, as much as I can, and I refer them out. So, I'm no. doing that a little bit more just because I'm I'm doing other things right now. But um, I still work my. I mean, like I said, I did 77 transactions last year. I love real estate. I'm a real estate agent. Um, but I'm starting to step out a little bit more because I don't need to do 77 transactions. Right. I would have been perfectly fine doing 34, you know, or, or half of that, and then how many other people could benefit from building their business by me referring business out to them, right? But for me personally, I, I don't usually work with buyers anymore, unless, like Nolly said, I really want to. Um, I don't have the time, I don't have the passion. And if you don't have the passion for it, like they see right through that. And so I'm not the right person to work for them, but I could send it to somebody else who has the passion. So if I have a listing, um, first of all, I, I never hold my own open houses, right? So there's always opportunities for you guys to pick up clients in open houses, not only buyers, but listings as well. Because once they see what we do, is we'll list it on, on a Thursday, we won't allow any showings until the open house on Saturday. Mm. So what happens is all these people are bumping into each <laughs> other and it's a feeding frenzy and the neighbors are coming in and they're like, oh my gosh, what are these agents doing to get all these clients? You can pick up listing leads that way as an open house agent, right? So I refer all of my, I'm never gonna, ref, I'm never gonna work a buyer on my listing anyway because I won't ever do both sides. So I just refer all the business out. However, if you're still building your business and you love working with buyers, which there's nothing wrong with buyers. I've just been working with buyers for 16 years. I'm, I'm kind of tired. Then just refer it out. Um, but it just depends on what you want to structure your business. Yeah. So really the same. What um, are you drinking? If you, oh, what am I drinking? Um, wow. This is my lunch, y'all. Wow, okay. So this is okay. like three bananas, <laughs> one cup of blueberries, two dates, coconut water, and a bunch of healthy stuff. Be happy that we It looks really bad, but yeah, it's good it does for look really <laughs> My sales love it. Um, by the way, when, you, when, it, when it comes to habits, since she asked what I'm drinking, um, it used to be I would drink this god-awful green drink, right, with, with kale and spinach and all kind of garbage in there. And, um, but it was, a, it was a decision. I said, I'm going to drink this crap every day because I hate it, right? But I did hate it. But I did thir for 30 days. Now, all of you go from resistance to acceptance, okay? So the, at first, the, the, the body doesn't want it. Like, so it's like, man, this is, this is dumb. Boy, you know you want that cheeseburger. You know you want that taco, huh? Get that crap out of here. So that's what the body does. The mind does that. Then after about two weeks, you get to craving it. You're like, and then, and then it's just acceptance. It's like, okay, this fool's gonna keep drinking this crap. I guess we're just gonna plug our nose and go for it, right? I'm just gonna accept that he's crazy and he'll, go, he'll get over it, right? And then you actually get to the point where you have assistance. So it's resistance, acceptance, assistance. Now the body is like, where's that green drink? I want the green drink, green drink, green drink. Gotta have the green drink. <laughs> After about 30, 40 days. I'm like, fool, this is 11 o'clock. We get in the green drink at 12. Calm down. See what I'm saying? And that's, that's how it is. That, <laughs> when, you, when you introduce discipline to what you do, don't worry. It's going to be crappy at first, but it, it ultimately. Now, back to this question about buyers um, I've left I will be admit that I've left a lot of money on the table and I was happy to you know I, past my second year I never had a year where I made less than a half a million in commission and so I just didn't care if the buyer if, if on my listings when I moved from um, from Remax to Keller Williams I had 70 signs that I had to redo I had a lot of listings on the market and at one time I had 121 listings active or pending Okay, that's when inventory was on the market for a long time, mm -hmm. right? But, it, but it's a pipeline, right? So what you should do is you should refer it or have a buyer agent on your team. That's what you should do. And so eventually I would have buyer agents, but they sucked. And I wasn't a good trainer back then. Um, and so I, I just didn't care, honestly. Um, but you should care. You, should, you shouldn't let it 
fall through the cracks. Now, if it was a personal SOI of mine, um, what I would do is refer it out to somebody that I trusted that would get it done. Maybe not even my buyer agent on my team. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, there's a lot of ancillary business you can get from all those buyer leads. I'm not saying you have to go 100% listing. I did from the beginning, from day one, never looked back. But for, for many of you, it, it would be irresponsible for you to do that mm -hmm. because you have obligations, bills, and so on. And so you have to kind of scale, you have to scale it, 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 you have to kind of grow into that. Does that make sense? So you start working with less and less and less. Pretty soon you look up, you're like, oh, I'm only 20% buyers. You know, ideally for me, it's like a 90-10. A, a and I work, like this guy that I'm working with now, he was, uh, he was interviewed to be the CEO of ClickFunnels, which is a company that I absolutely love. Um, Russell Brunson makes 100 million a year, and he's, I just love him. And so this guy was interviewed to be the CEO of that company. So I want to hang out with them. Like, I want to go show them houses. Like, that's fun for me. You see what I'm saying? But here's the thing. If it's not fun, that's what Elizabeth said. If it's not fun, that's an indicator that you should, you should try to make it fun. You should choose to make it fun and easy. And I got to tell you, listings are fun, guys. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Uh, it, you know, anyway. Some listing idea really quick, too. If... Again, this is for EXP people. We all have KV Core, right? So you can go in and go ask the agents, um, and you can market other people's listings. Like I let people do that all the time, so you could get clients. But here's the other thing: what I'll let agents do is I'll let you guys go to my listing, and you can say, "Look, we just listed this house." You don't have to say I. You don't have to say Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. We, right? Because we're one brokerage. We right. can list, like we can market our listings, right? Use our listings. Come to the listing agents and say hey what do you have on the market sometimes I have some really awesome ones that aren't even on the market yet we can also start marketing those to our own sphere just say we right yeah. if you go on a listing appointment and they say how many houses have you sold in this neighborhood first of all know your numbers you <laughs> might not have ever sold anything say well we've sold five houses in this market yeah right use the we you got to you talk about the mind shift use the we we're all one family we're all here we're you know building this together we're all owners of this company the better we all do so let's figure out how to be strategic but use our listings for those of us that have listings use them um, to your advantage and and you'll pick up listings that way because people are watching I'm not huge on social media I'm trying to get better at it but <laughs> people are watching what you're doing they're like oh my gosh you've got another listing you've got another listing Yes, we do, right? Let me, let me add, I'm gonna add on that. This is how crazy of a marketer I was. I'd always teach my students to go up, exactly what Elizabeth said. So if you don't have the numbers, who's got them? Oh, my team leader. Okay, well let's use, and, and let's use we. Oh, but they don't have them. Okay, let's use your office. How many has your office done? Well, the office hadn't done that many. Well, let's go to the MLS. How many have sold, right? Because we're all part of the same family. Oh, and, 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 and some of them would actually, brand new agents, they say, hey, well, in our multiple listing service, we've sold over, and they just use that. We've sold over 20 houses in this neighborhood, right? So it's always the we. Now, you may not want to go up that far. You know, that was maybe pushing it. But, um, you know, I love that strategy. Use it to your advantage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What else? Um, I was intrigued by the uh, trial listings idea. So when you suggest that... I didn't know we had a broker in the room, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Close your ears. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I but the to, way I she's to, looking, I'm like... You. You this up. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's, it's, hey, it's for all the good. record, I had never heard of that either. I've never done that, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> not to say I'm not going to. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> Yeah. Risk of a little bit of financial stuff. Y'all hear what she's saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so okay. So if you're gonna, it's a write-off. So a trial, a trial. If you're gonna do a trial listing, um, are we gonna take on the financial obligation of? Because you, you could theoretically, you could say, hey, it's a trial listing. You pay all the upfront fees and stuff. But I don't let them back out of the deal. If I have a contract, if we have, if we get their number, then we're done. I mean, we're good. So if there, it's not a trial like, okay, somebody made a full price offer and I don't want to sell. That's not a trial listing. A trial listing is you want to sell. I mean, you, you, you don't have to sell or even need to sell, but you at, least, you at least want to sell. But you want to see what the market will do and if you could get your number, right? And in this market, it's a good market to do them because you'll get your number and you'll get it. And so if you do the right market analysis and you know that that home is going to, I mean, you know it's going to sell in three days or four, right? And so you do a seven day or 14 day or 30 day, whatever is comfortable 
for you to say. And a lot of times what will happen is as the client is going through the process of listing their home with you, they forget all about the trial thing. Like they're in the game now. Mm -hmm. It's just that's another tool in your tool bag. You say, oh, we could do a trial listing. Well, what's that? And then you get into this and that's that alleviates. Now, the way I do it to keep in broker compliance, because I'm a broker also. I got my broker's license in 2008 and I've been a broker. Uh, Trek calls me an independent broker, but I choose to be under EXP. And so for, to be in compliance, I go ahead and list. Our brokerage doesn't tell us how long we have to list the property, but it would probably be like, you took a seven day listing, man. What's going on here? It would be kind of weird. So I do, like I said, I do the full listing and I do a clause that says they can terminate at any time. We used to do that. It's called an easy exit listing. We used to do that all the time anyway. Well, what if I don't like listing with you, man? I don't, what if I don't like the way your cowboy hat looks one day and I just want to get, I say, you know what? Give me 30 days to prove that I can get your home sold. Would you do that? Yeah, I'll give you 30 days. Okay. So then I would write, seller may terminate this listing at any time after 30 days. And that's perfectly fine to do. So, uh, yeah, if they've received yeah. an offer, then you've already fulfilled your contract and you're owed your commission. Yeah. If they've already received a full price, an offer that matches and the terms and then match with what they're asking. For yeah. those of y'all that um, have been in my pre-listing class before, I have a cancellation guarantee in that pre-listing class where it's the same exact yeah. thing, or it's packet, my pre-listing packet. Um, basically the same thing. If for any reason, and there's all these obligations, cancellation guarantee, so then I don't get objections at the listing table anymore or at the um, consultation table because they're like, well, what if I need it? And I'm like, no, you have an out. What he's talking about, though, and you're talking about the money that you're spending to get the listing ready, first of all, yeah. it's a write-off. Yeah. Always, I'm always looking for write-offs, uh, and it's a cost of doing business. But you can also write in special stipulations. If we terminate without an offer or we terminate this listing agreement, Correct. seller agrees to pay you know, reimburse for 50% or whatever your costs are. So you're both partners in that in that strategy and it's not you taking on all the risk. Mm -hmm. And if you're putting a home out there where they're wanting to test the market, how far out will you, you know, how high will you raise that just to see? The price? Especially right now, yes. Well, what I, personally, I like to price it at what the market value is. Yeah. And then anything over that would be what it so a lot of people want to price it like oh they're getting 650 but nothing has closed yet or it's you know pendings and all this but if it's if it's valued at 500 or 550 i'll put it at 550 they might still get 700 but i'm not going to price it at 700 you know what and saying? you don't have the appraisal issues exactly if you, if you have multiple offers then you can do appraisal waiver right um, and then you're not having to deal with the i dealt with an appraiser all day yesterday because of a, of a situation so if you're pricing it in line with cost and now the appraisals are catching up a little bit more. In January, February, they weren't. It was a mess. Um, they're catching up a little bit more, so you're starting to see the trend. Um, so, but price it aligned with comps, and then you can go up a little bit and just tell your client, this is what I, if you trust me on this, we're going to get pass that around. Kind of and look at them and pass them around. Okay with the right? And if a client wants to, and I talked about this last week when we were talking about multiple offers, but um, if a client wants to price it too high, I mean, I'm looking at the numbers and they are just not working with me, right? Because this is a partnership. I will write in special stipulations. Um, I will tell them, I hope I'm wrong, right? Mm -hmm. But I know this is important to you, so why don't we do this? Let's write in special stipulations. If we don't have an offer within two weeks, which in our market right now, it's like two days, but yep. if you don't have an offer within two weeks, um, seller agrees to lower the price and we'll have another conversation, right? So yep. when then, when I'm calling them in two weeks, they know why I'm calling because their house is still sitting there. Um, but you never want to you never want to battle them. You want them to realize, hey, we're working together on this thing. I'm working with you. I hope I'm wrong. Um, and and if you are wrong, then that's awesome. You're like, great news. I was wrong. Uh, and if they don't have an offer, then they know why you're talking to them. It's hard yeah. for the other client is your husband, right? Oh, oh that's, <laughs> that's it. That, that, those are family matters. We don't cover that here. No. <laughs> My um, husband's in here and tells me that he's going to fire me all the time. So. Yeah. She said, she said, what if your client is your husband? So that that's another. Um, just like Elizabeth, I do a, uh, t like a total market overview. So I will put in there, Hey, I'll say, let's try your price for 14 days. And if we don't get your price and I'll, I will build an automatic price adjustment into paragraph 15, I think is what it is, um, into the listing agreement. So I don't even have to call them. It says after 14 days, this, the price will automatically adjust to boom. And I call it a price adjustment. Um, instead of a 
price reduction, but it doesn't matter. I mean, some people call it a price improvement. I've never liked that term. <laughs> Not very approved, yeah. yeah. So any other questions? We have about oh, by the way, um, I'm passing my books around just so you guys can feel them, you know, smell them, touch them, stuff like that, and then give them back. <laughs> so they're going to go around from table to table. I should have done that earlier. Just didn't. Has a question. Oh, hey. Hi. Uh, so I know you What's your name? Disney. Like, well, Disney. All right. I love that. Orlando. Isn't that fun? That's crazy. Yeah. I, you yeah, just I mean, said Disney and I was like, wait, what? No, okay. Go ahead, Disney. Um, so I noticed you said do the two. Do the two. Um, No, I've never made a cold call in my life, ever. This is, this is God's honest truth. Now, I do teach cold calling to some of my students that are high Ds. That's why it's important for you to know who, this is a very important question, Disney. It's important to know your personality profile because I teach my students to, by the way, I don't charge for coaching, so don't call me out, hey, could you coach me? I don't do that anymore, but I'm saying students by way of my free videos and free training, YouTube and all the stuff that I do. Um, because of revenue share, I've been able to bring the price of 90% of everything that I charge for in the past to free. So it's, so my students, people that choose to study under me, um, it basically, the question again was about how the, do you, how do you generate, what, what yeah, do you do the two? yeah, do the two. So do the two, a lot of people think right away is calling. And I don't say calling. So I have 27 strategies and you'll see the book, triple my listings. There's 27 different strategies on how to generate listings and maybe five of them have to do with actually making phone calls now I do warm calls that's people that I know that know like and trust me those are people that I'll call but I've never made a cold call now if you're a high D then you could make cold calls okay if you as long as you don't burn yourself out um, you have to per, in my training I teach that you have to lead generate to your personality profile let me say it again it's very powerful it's life-changing for many of you you have to lead generate according to your personality profile. If you are not a cold caller, do not cold call because you will burn out in this business. That's the reason why we would, we would take people through maps coaching and some of them, if you're an SC or a CS profile, you, that's, that's, that's not, that, now a lot of people don't like co, uh, cold calling even if they're Ds, but they can actually do it and be successful at it. So um, cold calling is not a, tra a strategy that I've ever used or teach. Um, but there are some people that teach it and they're very successful. See, most coaches teach what they know, what, what works for them. And then they teach everybody should do it this way. Um, that was the thing, myself and Ricky Carruth kind of went back and forth with this because he teaches cold call, cold call, cold call. And I'm like, Ricky, that's what you like to do. You, you thrive on, call, on conversations and arguments with sellers and all this. But, you know, the, most of the population is introverted. That's not going to work for them. So most coaches don't even know they're doing this, but they're teaching strategies that will only work for a small percentage of people. Um, you know, they're not effective because you don't feel good. And part of what gets the sale or gets the decision is the energy that you bring into the conversation. Because as homo sapiens, we all are transmitters and receivers of energetic information. We, we, are, we are electrical beings, that's what we are. You know, we have an electrical system. So when you feel a certain way, um, I, I immediately pick up on it. Now, some people are more sensitive to it, but the reality is, and that's why I teach people to trans, transmutate fear to excitement um, when they go on a listing appointment, because it's the same emotion, base, it's the same base, um, not the same emotion, it's, you have the same symptoms, you know, sweaty palms, stammering, st you know, if I want a million dollars, I'd be doing, uh, or, you know what the difference is between um, fear and excitement? Like, But if I go like this, <laughs> say, man, that boy's excited. He's excited about something. It's a smile. The difference between fear and excitement is a smile. So when you sit down in front of a seller and you're all like, oh, this is my first listing, just start smiling. They're like, boy, what's wrong with you? I'm like, hey, I'm just happy to be with you. <laughs> Good. But Dick, uh, Disney, to your, your question, 
I've never cold called. If you ever told me I had a cold call, I would like crawl under a table <laughs> and you'd never see me, right? And I'd get out of business. I treat people the way I want to be treated. For me, what I was doing is I was sitting down. Now we're now that COVID's going away, now you can do this more. I'm a relational person. Like I want to sit. I mean, Gene will teach you get in front of a bunch of people and. For me, I like one-on-one. -on -one. I want to get to know you. I want to get to know what you're looking for. And so I got involved with people and organizations and um, environments that really kind of, I, I'm, that feed my soul, mm. right? So when we first moved here, um, I, I started in Georgia and had to start my business there. And then in 2008, when we moved here, I had to start my business here. I knew nobody. But I had a little one at the time. I have four. Like, I <laughs> didn't stop at one. But I got really involved in what he was involved in. So that was like preschool, and that was like swimming lessons and all these other things. And you get to know those people one-on-one. -on -one. That's how my business started building up. Um, my second deal was a listing because of that. So put yourself in the environments that, you know, Jill Lieber, if you all know her, she talks about tribe marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Get in your tribe. That's right. You're really into Ooh, running. Get into a running club. Yep. Right. Um, if you don't like animals, sorry, <laughs> I don't like animals. I mean, they're fine as long as they're not near me. I'm not, you're not going to see me at, over at Austin Pets Alive or volunteering at the animal thing. Yeah. Right? Don't do something that's not authentic to who you are. But figure out what you like and get involved in that. You're gonna, it's not about who, uh, who you know, it's who knows you. Mm -hmm. Network and get to know those people and start adding them to your database and building those relationships and your business is going to come. That's right. That's <laughs> I don't like it when somebody calls me out of the blue, or you know, even if it's my friend, that's like, hey, and wants to talk about business. We all have those friends that you yeah. see, you're like, oh, I love you to death, but I don't have the energy to talk about business. I don't ever want to be that person that comes up on their phone. So I do what's comfortable for me. And I'll text, hey, I was just thinking about you, or let's go grab coffee and catch up and connect. If you start doing what's comfortable for you and in your circles, you're going to build your business. By the way, if you're doing 70 plus deals a year, you don't have to ever call anybody. Right? So, so re realize that these are techniques that I say pick and choose. You know, take what you, what you want to inc incorporate into your business. You can have a phenomenal business. Like, like Ricky Carruth does 100 deals a year through cold calling. I've never done that, never, never done a cold call, and I did 100 deals a year. You know what I'm saying? And Elizabeth is doing 70. She probably would do over 100 if she called her people. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> just call, hey, how you doing? <laughs> uh, but, but with Elizabeth, she could actually make phone calls to people with no agenda, except how are you doing? That's it. And never talk about business. And business will reciprocate from that. Okay. Now, here's a trick. If you really don't ever want to call someone and, and you want to delegate this out or hire somebody to do it, just make sure that when they call your SOI, like a person on your team that makes these calls for you, they are constantly using your name. So it would sound like this. Um, hey, Julie, this is so-and-so from the Elizabeth Riley team, and Elizabeth was thinking about you today, and what Elizabeth wanted me to tell you was this, and Elizabeth was this, and she saw you on Facebook that you get, and Elizabeth this, and Elizabeth that, okay? Because let's say, let's just face it, like if Glenn Sanford were to never call me, but his business partner would have called and say, hey, Glenn was thinking about you. Glenn saw that you just did this and Glenn saw you speaking in Balcony's Country Club and Glenn wanted me to call you and tell you this and Glenn, I, I would feel like I just got a call from Glenn Sanford. You see what I'm saying? So there's a, there's a scripting around. I, I never teach people. You won't find it in any of my books or YouTube videos, um, but I don't teach people to hire that out because I teach you to do it yourself, but I know most agents won't ever do it. <laughs> so if you're not going to do it, you're just like, no, I'm not going to do it. I won't do it. <laughs> and if you're that person, then just hire it out because it, that way it'll get done. I had a guy, um, I'm, this last thing I'm going to say, and this guy, his name is Andy Green. Andy Green was uh, making 25 million a year, which I think is a pretty, it's okay, right? 25 million, not 25 million dollars a year. He had a 25 million a, a year real estate business, 25 million in volume. And I kept telling him this simple strategy. Really, I said, Andy, dude, Andy, Andy, Andy. You know what he did? He hired a VA four hours a day, 20 hours a week, okay? His, within 12 months, his business went from 25 million to 50 million just by calling his people. That's it. And the other thing he wasn't doing is following up because especially a lot of high Ds, 
They, they, want, they're, they're like the, they want the meat on the bone. You got meat on it? Nah, you go to the next one. She was just following up, following up with his sphere of influence, following up with his people. Four hours a day, I think he paid her like eight bucks an hour, and um, double his business from that one strategy. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, people were hearing from him. So, um, but realize that there's no wrong or right. Every, you can interview a hundred of us at the top of our game, and we're gonna have a hundred different ways that we do this. The whole thing is about shifting the way you think into saying, I can do this, okay? Most of you are far more eminently qualified to do this game, this business, based on your profile than I ever will be, okay? But I did not let that stop me from succeeding in the game. Make sense? Okay. Liz, you wanna? So thank you guys for being here. I hope this was helpful. Nolly, I think you're amazing. Thank you. I <laughs> Six thousand so a year. It's, it's a free tool. Plus a thousand dollar setup fee. Plus a thousand dollar yeah. setup fee. Um, so it's a free tool that, at least at a minimum, know how to work it at the basis, the basic levels, and um, let's get it all set up. So next week, Brandon will be in here, and uh, we thank you. We thank you all for being here today with us. Oh, and if you're not at EXP yet, oh. sign up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all right, love you guys. See you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.